Alleluia. And that child that is not circumcised shall be cut off from my people. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, guys, this is very, very important. I'm going to be talking about circumcision and its importance. And in a nutshell, I'm just going to explain what happened so that we can, we can develop the story from there. Abraham. God appeared to Abraham. I guess this was about the fourth time, if not the faith, that God appeared to Abraham. He appeared to Abraham at the age of 99 and told him that I want to establish a covenant that is eternal. Very important. When something is eternal, it's everlasting. It never ends. And he said, hey, this covenant is between you, Abraham, and your descendants. What do I want to do as God? I want to be their God and they will be my people through you. You are the father and these are your, these will be your descendants and I will be your God and they will be my people. So I want us to establish a contract here or a covenant that is everlasting. And Abraham was all years waiting to hear. He said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to circumcise all male children at the age of eight. But there's a caveat. If that child that is not circumcised, it has to be cut off from my people. It shall not be part of my people and I shall not be their God. They will be outside the grace. I'm God, you're my people. If you're not circumcised, you can't be among my people and I can't be your God. Terrible, right? And this thing was very serious. Then what happened? Abraham took all the same day, the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 17, on the same day, he took his whole household and circumcised everybody, all men, including foreigners, his servants, everyone was circumcised so that they can honor the covenant of God. God said, if you are not circumcised, you have broken my covenant. So you're not part of the agreement. You have, it's broken. So you're, you're, I'm not your God, you're not my, per, my person or my people. Abraham took it very, very seriously. On the same very day, he himself got circumcised. And guess what? He was 99 years old. So I want you to understand that story and what it meant and where I'm going to take it forward from here. So two key things I want us to take away from that story. Abraham, from... When he was born till 99, he was not circumcised. But at 99, he got circumcised. So you're never too late to be circumcised. Keep that at the back of your head and my head. Number two, Abraham and all the people in his family looked different. They had a before and after. So these are the two key takeaways that I want us to, I want us to take home. Never too late to be circumcised. And when you are, you're different from yesterday. So Abra Abraham had a look. If you looked at him physically, in his physical anatomy, he was different before and after circumcision. And God said, this is how I want it. And you, as you see, it's in the culture of the Middle East and I think most part of the world to circumcise their male children. But I'm not here to talk about how, you know, man gets circumcised. You, we know it's a removal of a foreskin from the manhood of a man. So there is something that gets cut off and removed. So you look different before and after. But I want to talk about that covenant because it's eternal. This, uh, this covenant that God is trying to establish will live or, uh, will forever be there. It will live on for eternity. That's why I'm trying to say it's important for us to understand what's this circumcision because we all need to be circumcised. And I'm not trying to say this is something that's done only on men. So women, please don't turn the dial and say, oh, this is not for me, it's for men. It's for everybody. So I want to bring this, that term, circumcision, and let us dis discuss that openly. What is circumcision? And we, we are going to look at this contract or, or covenant because it's eternal. When God says something is eternal, it can't change. It will never, never change. So it's important for us to know what do we need to do so that we can get circumcised. Perfect. How do you know you or me are circumcised? 
litmus test. What's a litmus test? One, do you have a before and after? If you don't, most likely you don't even know as such there is a thing as such as circumcision. So you must have a before and after. And we have, we, we have come to realize that there is no stage you can be circumcised at any age. There is, you, you're never too bad to be circumcised. You're never too late to be circumcised. You, you're never outside the purview of circumcision because Abraham circumcised all people, including foreigners. So it has no tribe, it has no race, it has no color, it has no age, it has no sex as well as, uh, as I'm gonna explain as we go forward. So everyone needs to be circumcised because if you're not, there's a huge, huge eternal risk that God said you will and you will be cut off from my people. You'll be thrown out of the outer darkness. Means you're outside God's grace. So guys, very important to listen in. How do you get circumcised? Very easy. Apostle Paul says that circumcision that people thought about, about the physical cutting off of the foreskin, that's not what God intended. Jesus intended us to be circumcised in the heart. What does that mean? That means you must have a before and you must have an after. What does it mean? The foreskin that's being removed from the heart is the old you, an old me. So that means we, we, do, we do possess a nature that it is called in the Bible the old nature that has to be removed. So when we get circumcised, that old nature which is being represented by the foreskin is removed and we become new. And this is, this is what God has called us to be circumcised of. And how does it happen? Let's go back to Genesis. When God appeared to Abraham, he did not waste time. He did not dilly-dally. Like, oh, I'll do this tomorrow or next week. I postpone it after he did not. The same day, the Bible says the same day, he and his whole household got circumcised. So what does that mean? When you hear the word of God, you must respond the same day because tomorrow is not guaranteed. When you hear the convictions of the Holy Spirit, the word of God, you must respond on the very same day you must get circumcised. That means that there is a foreskin that must be removed from off you. And so that you, be, you become part of this covenant of everlasting covenant. And I wanna explain very simple, in very simple words, what is to be circumcised. The old man in you and me, the old man inside of you has to die or be cut off the first skin and you have to have a new look. Just as I said, Abraham from zero to 99 was different. On that very day he got circumcised, he, was a, he, he had a new look if you look at his manhood or his, his, his physique, you know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, when you hear the gospel being preached, something in you has to be removed. There's an old, dying to old self, old way of thinking, old way of seeing, old way of talking, old way of hearing, old way of perceiving, old way of doing with hands, old way of going with legs. Your old self. Because this old self has to be removed for you to be part of this contract of being God's people. So there is a death that must happen means you must die in order to be circumcised and i'm not talking about the physically dying and dying the old you has to die do you know like when you plant a seed and the seed has to die and you see the the, the, the there is something inside the seed like the two sides or some of them are uh, what do you call these things i think we call them the the cotyledons, you know cotyledons, that, that seed, the little seed, when you put it down there, it dies off, the skin comes off, and that well, that, that cotyledon becomes food for the sh new shoot. So the seed dies, so the seed can come up. That dying of the seed, so that the new plant can come up, is what I'm talking about. It's a circumcision I'm talking about. It's you dying to old, so that you can give in to the new. The old covenant of sacrificing goats and animals and blood died or was removed but something it's it's not it's something new came up that's the new covenant that's you and me have to die to the old self 
the way we think, the way we deal with others, the way we talk, the way we relate, the way we work, the way we move forward has to change and a new beginning starts. So this new beginning is the one that we are talking about. You must be circumcised in heart. Absolutely. And this happened only in accordance to the book of Romans chapter 10. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He comes in your heart. You confess Him with your mouth. You believe in the heart that He died. For, he came, God Himself left heaven. He came as a man. He paid your sins. He died on the cross. He rose again and went back to heaven. And he is there forever interceding for you. So when you accept this message and say, Jesus paid the price, so I don't have to pay it. And accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice he offered to the Father, thus becoming a propitiation for our sins. You accept that, then means you become born again in the heart and you confess Jesus is the Lord and Savior. Going forward from there, you become a new man. The Bible says you become a new man. The old man is gone and you become a new creation. Not that anything much changes, but it's all in the spirit. It is that kind of circumcision we are talking about. There is the foreskin that has died. So you, you get circumcised. When the heart has accepted Jesus Christ, you start talking different. You have, you have circumcised lips. You see, you don't, you, you, you stop talking the way you were talking yesterday and you don't curse anymore. You see, the, the way you were thinking now, you start thinking like Christ. You don't think evil. You know, the way we, you were seeing, what you were seeing, you, you see, it's, it has no taste anymore because now you have circumcised eyes. You have circumcised ears. What you were listening to, the filth, becomes unpleasant and you see now you want to listen to that which is clean because there is an old you that has died so guys we're just gonna finish tonight it's a very very simple message that if you have not been circumcised i'm afraid to say that you are already or you will be cut off from god's people you must receive jesus type of circumcision you must die to self the old you, the foreskin has to be removed. And that old you dying, there's a new creation Jesus gives birth to. And we know that when you confess him, the Holy Spirit is the one who comes in and circumcises the whole you. You start thinking differently. You start talking differently. You start seeing differently. You start listening differently. You, you, your, your meditation, you know, each man's heart is always talking to him. Each man's subconscious is always running thoughts. You see, the thoughts of evil disappear. And all you want is the things of God. You, you're singing hymns. You're reading the Bible. You're praying. It's the things of God because there is something that died. And that's why you hear some people say, I was smoking two packets a day of cigarettes. But since I met Jesus and accepted him, I stopped. The desires left. I was a fornicator. You know, I was fornicating. But since I met Jesus, the, the urge to go and, and sleep around is gone. I was using drugs. But now since I met Jesus and it made him my Lord and Savior, I don't have the urge to go and take the drugs anymore. I'm not addicted anymore. You know, since I got born again, the pornography that I was watching, now I, I hate it when I see people naked. I, I feel the, the holy anger of why are they doing so? You hear some people say I was a transgender or I was a homosexual, but since I left, the desires have left me. You know, I, I'm, I just feel normal, regular attractions. Uh, I was a liar, but now it's, it's hard for me for a lie to come out of my mouth. It's not because there is something we do to earn. It's something that is done to us. It's something that is a prerequisite of you being called a child of God. You have to be circumcised. And this type of circumcision is not something you do on yourself it's something you have to go to Jesus you have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior so that that old self dies and we all know that we have an old self and it doesn't mean after you get born again you won't you won't get tempted that old self always tries to to, to come back but it's, it's it's easier to conquer when you have been circumcised 
because it'll be just be a temptation and you have the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit and Jesus and, and a prayer life that helps you to conquer that. So I'm here to call you guys to be circumcised in the heart. Jesus is calling you to be circumcised in the heart. You know very well that old you, that old self, you know the things that make you not be circumcised. You know them very well. You know the habits that has kept you, they, they have kept you bondage. You know what you're giving your attention to that is keeping you away from being called into God's people. Your conscience, for sure, the conscience of man. We have a conscience that tells us, that it always tells us that, you know, it, it, it's talking to us and it's always telling us, oh, you know, what you're doing is, is, is right. It's, it's not of God. And that old self is what God is calling us to be circumcised of. Because without that circum circumcision, remember what we said in the beginning, that child that is not circumcised shall be cut off from my people because they have broken the covenant. It's very important to be circumcised. So I'm calling you guys because every one of you and me knows what bondage or old self, we know the foreskins that we have, that right now we can confess and say, I am sure that I'm not, I'm not circumcised. That if, any, if God has to take count of his people, I would surely be cut off. I would surely and surely be cut off. Don't wait for tomorrow. Abraham got circumcised on the very same day. So I'm calling people of God to be circumcised in the heart. And you will see the fruits of that circumcision you see your brain being circumcised in thoughts. You see your eyes, your ears, your whole entire being, your whole, your whole lifestyle changing around, turning around relationships, how you deal with men, how you deal with women, how you deal, how you view women, how you view men, how you view children, how you view the world, how you view money. Because right now some of us are not circumcised when it comes to money. We run after money with all that we have, with all our hearts, which is also wrong. But when you get circumcised, money runs after you. You don't run after vanity, but it runs after you because you're higher than vanity. You know, some of us, how we view men, you know, men are not machines, you know, machines to satisfy and objects of machines that make us get satisfied. Women are not objects. You know, people are not there to be used anyhow just to for for a means for you know you know how they say the the means justifies the end. Use men to in your company and pay them nothing and steal all the profits and you know use their sweat and blood to build you. Men are not objects. Women you know, women are not sexual objects. Men are not sexual machines. Children are not. Old men are not problems in the society. You know, so God wants us to, to, to reach to that place where we get circumcised in the heart. And that's the only way we can be counted as God's people. So for those who heard, uh, who heard this message, and right now you're ready to be circumcised, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to give you a few seconds here. Let me look at my clock. 10 seconds, get ready. If you want to be circumcised today like Abraham, at the age of 99, you're never too bad to be circumcised. And don't worry about what is going to happen in the future. Is my old self going to try and come back? Are my friends going to try and come and influence me? Uh, what am I going to do with, with the substances that I, I have in the house? That's not your worry. Your worry is to be circumcised. The one who comes in you, that is Jesus, and his Holy Spirit is going to help you going forward. Just be, become, become this new creation, and he takes care of the rest. All you want to be counted in is as a people of God. All you need to do is to get circumcised. The rest, you don't have to worry. God has become your God and you have become a people of God or a person of God. Worry not about what's gonna happen and temptations and things in the world and trouble. Those uh, will always be there. The most important things is to become a son of God. Well, the Bible says, 
behold what manner of love God has given unto us, which we have been called children of God. Why? We became circumcised. How? Putting our faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only way to be circumcised. Yes, to remove the foreskin, the old you and a new you becomes. That's the only way to become a person of God, a child of God. The opposite is true. If you're not a child of God, you are a child of the devil. And you know the wages of that too. Thank you. So, are you ready? Lift up your right hand and say, Master Jesus, have heard your word. I want to be circumcised of you today. And this circumcision is of the spirit, is of the heart. I believe you left heaven. You came on earth as a man. You showed us the way. You paid the ultimate sacrifice for your life. You shed your blood. You carried my sins, transgressions, and iniquity. Receive me graciously, Lord. Forgive me my sins. Circumcise my heart. Give me a new life. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. My old past is gone. I'm a new creation, circumcised by the Holy Spirit. Help me to live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that I have become a child of God. Thank you that, I'm, that I've become a person or a people of God. God, you're my Father. God, you're my God. And I am your person. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying that prayer. It looks so simple, but its impact is eternal thank you so much find a spiritual local group church that you can pray with and fellowship with as you grow as a child of god and as a person or a people of god thank you so much god bless you